Hello everyone and welcome to the final Heart of Iron 4 dev diary before the release of Trial of Allegiance. Yes, I'm afraid we've come to the end of the dev diary cycle, with the DLC being released on the 7th of March, which I think is a Thursday. As a result, we've only got one more topic left to talk about, and this week it's art and achievements. For the most part, I'll basically just be scanning through the art and just seeing if it looks good or not. Not too much to really cover there, but in terms of the achievement system, I think I'm going to be going through the same rating system I've always done. So we're going to be ranking the achievements on how they look and giving them a score of either being easy, medium, hard, or world domination or world conquest, if you like. We save that final legendary rank for the achievements, which are so mind-numbingly expansive or demanding or difficult that in effect you can only win them by doing World Conquest. With that all being said, let's take a look at this week's Dev Diary. So we begin with the tearings of what looks to be the front page of a newspaper, <laughs> not a particularly real one, unless Paradox have got into the media business. Inside we can see discussions regarding the Chilean government, some of the issues they've got going on over there, the general um, war tensions in South America, really this could be more so to do with Peru and Ecuador, but it's covered there too, as well as the threat of a German infiltrator, so Operation Condor ever looming. I guess this adds some nice flavour before we set off and start looking at all the portraits, logos, and everything else. First things first, we get to see some significant figures from Argentina. Um, I can definitely recognise this guy following down the monarchy path, and is it just me, or does the guy in the bottom left have a lazy eye? I assume he must do, because otherwise why would it look like that? Interesting. Oh, and we probably shouldn't skip over Perón there in the top. Previously, I thought he had like a red outfit and red hat, but it seems to be blue now, and many people will be happy to know that of course he has got his own country leader now in the game after a small rework. Following on up, we've got Brazil, and in the top left, we start off with the reworked portrait of Vargas, um, coming from the left side as opposed to the right side of his face. He also seems a much happier chap. Next to him seems to be a new woman added to Hoi for legendary times indeed, as well as a man on the right with a very stern face and a very large hat. And lastly, I'll note on the bottom row, we can see what appears to be uh, some kind of integralist leader, or maybe a general, with the dead giveaway being the green military uniform with the uppercase Sigma letter on his hat. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of a dead giveaway what his allegiance is. And finally for portraits, we can see some of them relating to Chile, which are possibly some of the most interesting on display. In the top left, that appears to be President Ibanez, like Carlos Ibanez, but he's wearing a crown, so I'm guessing this is the monarchist playthrough with uh, good King Carlos here. On the top right, we are blessed with a wonderful picture of what appears to be a Pickelhauser, the uh, commonly seen World War I German hat, but this time, of course, adapted to the Chilean uh, military man with a great tash too. In the bottom row, my knowledge of who these people are drastically goes down. The woman on the left appears to be, just guessing, either a communist leader, but probably more so a Native American leader. Scooting along to the right too, that just straight up looks like an evil German. I have no other way of saying it. That man looks pure evil. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely some characters on display. Following on, we're going to take a brief look at some of the national spirits for the different focuses. I won't take too long on this because, of course, it's art, but you can see a lovely looking cow here. Um, I think this is Carlos. The Chilean Easter Island focus appears to be here. Um, this is the tanks that I believe you can get from Germany down one of the paths. On the lower side, we're looking at a man with trendy hat, a Brazilian monarchy restoration, judging by that wonderful looking crown there. Spies in South America, maybe Operation Condor, um, the Jaguar focus, which we covered in a previous dev diary, but there is the national spirit for it, and monarchy and monarchy and all the rest united all together. Next up comes an image covering all of the different types of soldier units that you're going to see in the battle. Um, pretty familiar stuff, but there is one particular unit my eyes immediately are drawn to, the bottom right. That looks like the Mafia to me. That is straight up a dude with a Tommy gun. I know it's got nothing to do with this DLC, but goodness, it really makes me wish 
they went back and redid uh, America, like a, a second America rework past them on the guns, because there's tons of other stuff you could apply in terms of like alt history. I mean, in the 1930s, Scarface is still alive, isn't he? Al Capone. So this is by no means ahistorical to have some kind of American mafioso. Following on, we've got some less professional looking soldiers that you can also get. We appear to be looking at some kind of indigenous soldiers, maybe some Chileans. In the bottom left, that is very clearly the um, Brazilian bandits. That, that Those hats are like iconic to the region now. I don't think I'll ever forget the Brazilian hat that is specifically looks like that. Also, in the top right, isn't that the guy from XCOM who's like in charge of your base in the first um, enemy unknown game? I'm pretty sure that's the guy. Hello, Commander. So I'm not wanting to take too much time by going over every single piece of art, because again, not really too much I can add other than just looking at them and saying how cool they are. Um, a great series of planes there between um, bi engines and singular engines uh, to boot. We also get to take a look at six different tanks that are going to be on display. Not massively um, crazy designs um, that we can see there, but all pretty interesting regardless. Moving on down, however, we see what appears to be a pretty dramatically long barreled tank in the bottom right. What on earth were they cooking? To be honest, the tanks there all kind of look very interesting, very small barrel, very long. Um, that one's got a side turret on the left, my goodness. Yeah, these are these are very interesting. Oh, it carries on, it gets even more interesting. Okay, they get progressively more interesting as they go down. How many, like, tread uh, spinners does that thing have in the center middle? Wow, the detail's really interesting. And I guess that at the bottom is getting close to like a modern tank. And maybe they're amphibious too, wow. Okay, next up we're looking at some motorized and some mechanized. Um, really cool that you can actually see the men inside of the vehicle. Because usually, of course, when you see the armors and the motorized, you don't actually see anybody inside of them. But here, of course, you do. And then finally, in the series of images of vehicles, we'll end with this classic looking car. Do we think this is like um, a recon car? The cars that you build, which are basically just good for garrisons? Um, this one is, of course, empty, but I love the addition of the handle at the front of the vehicle, and you spin that up, and if you spin it up fast enough, it starts the engine. Goodness me, what a what a blast of the past. Ah yes, we do get to see occupants, and it's the Mafia. Of course it's the Mafia. Sitting in the back there with their Tommy guns. Oh my goodness, I keep going back to like a USA rework with an interesting Mafia path. Okay, put it out of my mind, put it out. And to finish the art section, we get to see a few images of the units in the actual game. So here we can see three units fighting in some forests as planes fly in the background. Next up, we've got an interesting perspective of scale as we can see some civilian looking fighters with what appear to be baby tanks in the background. I have no idea why the scale is so peculiar here, but in general, I like their look, I like their fit, and I like the fact that he's wearing just like a very casual, normal hat. And finally, with the great fog over the horizon, we finish the art section with a couple of planes doing a flyby over the side. Very good. And so, with all of the art wrapped up, we have arrived at the meat of this week's Dev Diary, looking at all of the various achievements. And I have to say, I think there's a good mix between easy, medium, and um, up to heart and world conquest. So let's take a look. First up is America decolonized. As Mapuche Chile, liberate all native people in North and South America. So we previously got to see just how many releasables Mapuche uh, Chile has available to them. And this is like the entirety of the American continent. So that means going toward the United States, Canada, which also means going toward the allies. It isn't quite a world conquest because you're effectively only going to war with the Allies, and which includes America, so it's hard. But I wouldn't necessarily say it's world conquest worthy. And the snakes smoked. As Brazil in the Allies capitulate Germany while controlling Berlin. Ooh, it's hard to say with this one. I'm kind of biased, so for me I want to say easy, but as like a general player base I'm probably going to stick this in medium. Um, because playing as Brazil, I do think you've got a pretty good basis to really grow. We've seen so much like potential with their industry focuses. 
I don't really see any trouble. Nobody's going to war with you. So you can really focus everything on helping the Allies capitulate Germany and kind of just stealing Berlin from under them, especially in the peace conference. I don't know, medium, but maybe for more experienced players easy. Chilean Empire. Control all mainland states that border the Pacific in South America, North America, and Asia. Oh, yep, yeah, that's the alarm. This is it. World conquest achievement. I have nothing else to say about that. That is 100% going to war with the Soviets because you're going to need to get their Siberian territory, going toward the Allies because you need to get Australia, you need to get New Zealand, you need to get Canada. You're going to need to go toward Japan um, because, of course, Japan on its own is in the Pacific. You're also going to need to go to war with the Chinese United Front because they own, you know, the Chinese coast is Pacific. It's ridiculous. That is a complete world conquest. The only caveat you have is that the only faction you're not going up against is the Axis. So maybe you can use that to your advantage, join the Axis, and then use them as your only help in this effective world domination. Cis Platine War 2 Electric Boogaloo as either Brazil or Argentina, be in a faction with Uruguay while at war with Argentina and Brazil. So sometimes when it comes to these achievements, it's kind of hard to judge how easy or difficult they're going to be just from the dev diary, but considering pretty much both focus trees have very easy ways to annex Uruguay, I can also therefore say it's going to be easy to then just release them as like a puppet and then create a faction with them and then just declare war on the other country, which you're not. And so for that reason, Uruguay being so easy to fight, I'm kind of going to say this is easy. I, I, I don't know, I really don't see any issue with this. It just requires you to be at war. Hispanics of the world unite. As Chile, form the Hispanic Alliance and have at least eight Hispanic nations in your faction. This one is difficult for me to truly have a grasp on how hard it is to do. Um, I think my initial core reaction is going to be medium, because let's say you can do it from like an annexy perspective. If that's the case, then my advice is naval invade um, Panama and then move up through Central America. And you've basically got like five or six nations under your belt already. In terms of actually inviting other nations to your faction, though, I guess it's one of those things where we have to play it to truly understand how difficult this could be. I'm home! As Brazil occupy every core state of Portugal. So we haven't seen the Pacifics, specific, specifics. So we haven't seen the specifics of the Brazil monarchist focus tree, but we did see two focuses that were specifically to do with unifying with Brazil. So if we assume that there is a peaceful way to annex Brazil, sorry, annex Portugal in the same way that Portugal has the ability to peacefully annex Brazil, then maybe this is easy. If it doesn't, and it just gives you a war goal on Brazil, this immediately sticks on medium. I guess it kind of depends on what the actual focus says, but as I recall, we don't really know right now. Isla Malvinas. As Argentina, hold the Falkland Islands and South Georgia for 73 consecutive days. So for those who don't know, it was for 73 days that the Falklands were occupied by uh, the military occupation of um, from Argentina. And I guess this achievement is basically just reflecting the need for you to hold it for that amount of time. Similar to what I said with the Brazil I'm Home achievement, there was a focus in, I believe, the ally section of the Argentina diplomacy tree, which allowed you to negotiate for the Falklands. If that's the case, this could be an easy achievement where you just join the allies, and as an exchange for joining the allies, they just give you the islands. So it could be easy. If it isn't, it's probably just a medium, because the amount of troops that Britain is going to stick in the Falklands is, is not really an issue. King of what? Have Jack Antoine Bernard as King of Chile and control Paris. Okay, so I think what we're looking at here is a hard achievement. We saw with Chile that there is the opportunity to invite a French monarch into the country to become King of Chile, and further on down, there are focuses alluding to going back to France, hopefully getting calls on France, but there was definitely an idea of going back to France, so controlling it. If that's the case, 
you're either going to have to go to war with the Allies, maybe through joining the Axis and then asking for control of Paris, or maybe getting in a peace deal, or you're going to declare war on Germany and help the Allies, but not necessarily join the Allies, because if you join the Allies, you're just going to be liberating France, and you're going to be in the same issue you were in last time. So regardless of which you do, it could be somewhat difficult to actually find an opening for you to be able to control Paris. Maybe joining the Axis somehow is your best bet, like um, being a part of Operation Barbarossa. Lamento Boliviano. As Argentina, own all of Latin America, except Bolivia. Well, this seems like a tongue-in-cheek kind of achievement, depending on if Argentina has the ability to peacefully ask for um, the Guyanas, like Suriname and British and French Guyana, then this could easily be like a, a medium, you know, not too difficult. Not necessarily the easiest in the world, but definitely not too difficult. My core issue is what do they mean by own? Because if they mean own after a peace deal, then if you have to go to war with Britain, France and the Netherlands to get those free states, oh, that's going to be a nightmare. That instantly puts this to hard. So poof, depending on what's really possible, medium or hard. A land on fire. As any country, drop a new con Tierra del Fuego. This is a nice, easy achievement, nothing too crazy here. Basically, just drop a nuke on the very southern peninsula tip of South America in Tierra del Fuego, and you can do it as any nation. So, literally no problem. I guess you could, I don't know, do it with the Brits, because they own the Falklands, which means you can build an airbase there, which means you really wouldn't even have to, like, do anything. Just don't be democratic, and the rest should be straightforward. The Merry Ban. As communist Brazil, have Lampiao as a country leader and occupy Nottingham. Nottingham? As in, as in British Nottingham. So as communist Brazil, occupy Britain. Huh. I'm trying to think, like, what's even your in there? What's even your in to have the um, distance to get inside of Britain? Maybe if you can gain enough favour with Germany, you can get through the Axis and then go to Britain? Otherwise, you might be going on one very long naval invasion. Assuming that Germany isn't going to let you piggyback off their success into Britain, this could be a hard achievement. Um, maybe there's some exploit or fun you can do in there, but I'm getting the feeling of it being somewhat difficult. Oh, and just a quickly comment on the art. Um, I believe that's Robin Hood's hat, and it's like the Merry Men of Robin Hood. It's the Merry Ban. Don't worry about it. Move on. Proactive defense. As any communist South American country, occupy Washington DC. Ooh, how do we feel about this one? Well, I'm glad it's not a world conquest. Um, I think there is room in here for this to probably be a medium, because the strength of which you can get to was basically you have free reign to experiment with which South American nations you think are going to be the easiest. And as a result, you can probably push all the way up to Mexico and have some troops on the southern border. It would be much more useful if you could do this through Canada, but I'm not sure how you're going to get to Canada. I think it's probably a medium, but some players may struggle, so it could stick it on a hard for some players. Also, that's the Pentagon, with um, the sickle and hammer in the centre. <laughs> Reconquistadors. As Argentina or Chile, have a conquistador spirit active while holding all Spanish cores. I don't really remember what Argentina's conquistador spirit was, but I vaguely remember one for Chile. As for holding all Spanish cores, goodness me, it's so annoying that this isn't the Brazil one, because Brazil very clearly had something to do with going to Portugal. But if that's not the case, you might have to go annex Brazil, naval invade Portugal, and then use the front you have against Spain as Portugal to annex them. Could be annoying, could be quite difficult. Naval invasions are always a funny thing to really know if they're good or not. Again, there's probably enough easy ways for you to also circumnavigate things that it might not be the most difficult thing in the world. I'm going to say medium. Red hot chili peppers. As communist Chile, control California. This is very interesting, because wasn't one of the other achievements proactive defense, owning Washington DC as a communist South American country? And this one requires you to control California. In effect, why wouldn't you simply just do both of the achievements as Chile? 
See, now that kind of changes things. Regardless, it really comes down to how easy it is to gain enough strength early enough to take down the United States before kind of 1940, 1941. If you can grow very, very quickly, then it's going to be not too bad. If you can't, it's going to be hard. As a result, I'm going to stick to my guns and say medium. Okay, we're getting closer towards the end now with Revenge for the Triple Alliance. As Paraguay declare war on Argentina, Brazil and Uruguay within the same month. Okay, I think this has to be easy. All it requires you to do is declare war on free nations. So, in effect, you could, let's say, poof, find any focus that gives you cause, any focus that gives you an unlimited declaration of war, even just like timing your justifications correctly. There are tons of different ways you can find it so that all free nations can be declared one in the same month. Not an issue at all. Easy achievement. Rumble in the jungle. Own all Amazon states as any South American nation. Okay, this is a straightforward, annex a decent chunk of South America as any nation. Not too bad. Not necessarily super duper easy, but it's fine. It's a very solid medium. I also very much like the sloth with his little boxing gloves and boxing trunks on. Um, very wholesome looking. I like his little face. Somehow he has returned. Somehow Palpatine returned. As Argentina have Senor Hitler as country leader. That says Hitler, not Hilter. Is that a typo or is that straightforward? We do not know. But this definitely implies there is content for Germany evacuating to Argentina. That is basically a thing. They wouldn't have stuck in an achievement specifically to do with that if there wasn't going to be some kind of content regarding him. What that is, we certainly don't know, but there has to be, right? I'd like to give this a rating based on how easy or hard or whatever it is, but because we have been told nothing, and I mean literally nothing, I don't know. Um, isn't it the case that you need Germany to do like a civil war or something um, to get him? So that could be annoying. I don't know. It's not going to be easy, is it? It's probably going to be harder than easy. It's going to be like an Easter egg. Let's just say hard because we truly have no idea. Oh my goodness, those films. The True Condor Legion, as Chile, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Venezuela or Colombia send volunteers to Germany. I'm a little bit confused by what this achievement is actually saying right now. So is it just saying playing as any one of those nations just send volunteers to Germany? Because if that's all it's asking, this is an easy achievement. If it's actually saying something else where like you have to make all of those nations send volunteers to Germany in the same game, I suppose there would have to be a mechanic to specifically favour them to do so. But I don't think it means that. I think it means as either one of those nations, in which case this is an easy achievement. Okay, the final three. And in the third position, we have Ursel. Be communist and own all of South America. Straightforward. Um, I said previously that another one to do with owning the Amazon was medium. This is the same principle. If you can get the Amazon, you can get everything else. So it remains medium. Straightforward. Not the most difficult, not the most simple. Bang in the middle. In number two, we have Uruguay. Uruguay. It's like Aragon, but Uruguay. As Uruguay, join a war and have the most war participation while having at least nine cavalry divisions. I guess the million dollar question for this focus is what does it mean when it says join a war? Because if it means it has to be a war that you didn't start, hmm, that could be that could be difficult. I'm just trying to think if there's an easy inning for you to be able to join something. Not necessarily in historical. I think if you played this ahistorical, maybe, especially if you let many alt history wars happen, then you could find a war where one side is very much so sided to lose, you join them, you basically do all the work, and then you capitalise on the victory. Playing historical, it might be a little bit more difficult. I wonder when Peru and Ecuador do their conflict in South America, it says they get a spirit that they can't join factions, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't create a faction with them, does it? For example, if you create a faction with, let's say, Peru, and then join them and do like lots of work for them, you give them a massive air force advantage, etc, etc, maybe that could work. 
Oh, and also the title is, of course, it's it's close to Aragon, but it's Euragon. But the person in the art is, of course, Boromir, with the Horn of Gondor. So, oh, Lord of the Rings, in case, of course. But I'm kind of interested, what's the... Is there a part where Aragon blows the Horn of Gondor? Maybe, I can't remember. Undeniably, though, that is Sean Bean. And finally, the final, final achievement in this dev diary. Bad ending. The whole world is now Brazil. As Brazil, control every state in the world. <sighs> Does it even need to be said? World conquest achievement. But in their defence, they are not denying it. The whole point is, it has to be world conquest. I think everybody spent so long saying come to Brazil that eventually Brazil would just come to the entire world and lo, a spaceman watches over and sees the final victory of Brazil. My goodness. And with that, we have come to the end of this week's Achievement Dev Diary. So what do we think? Achievements all in all. Not many easy ones and not necessarily too many insanely hard ones. I'd say they're predominantly kind of averagey in the middle, but the really easy ones are really easy. And I think the really hard ones are like, as the, you know, world conquest, utter ridiculousness. I think my only disappointment, but the question is we don't really know to how much, is now that we know that old Adolf can come back to Argentina and go again, forming, you know, his his fourth attempt, it's a shame there's not a, um, I would have preferred like an achievement to do with world conquest as... Adolf as the fourth Reich in Argentina. I think that could have been even more funny. Then again, I guess it, depending on how difficult it is to form, maybe that's just a nightmare in waiting and we should all be grateful that didn't happen. You never truly know until the DLC releases. And saying that, that is where I will end this because of course the DLC releases next week and thus ends the Dev Diaries. Thank you all very much for being with me as we covered all of the Dev Diaries going through this DLC cycle. I'm sure I'll be back to go through the next DLC cycle and the Dev Diaries that follow then. With that, I shall say, thank you very much for watching. If you liked, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe, and have a very good time with the new DLC. Hey, you didn't forget about old Oscar did you? I seldom get to speak on these things so I just wanted to say. Peru. Stays. Winning. Bye.